Um, yes, I'm Ian Beavis and I'm the research curator here at Tunbridge Wells Museum and Art Gallery. Well, in fact, I have two roles. My research curator role involves being responsible for what I call the knowledge base uh, that supports the museum. So I'm responsible for the research behind the stories that the museum tells, uh, stories that we need to research for new displays and exhibitions, and also uh, facilitating inquiries from outside researchers who want to delve into local history or natural history. I've been with the museum for just over 30 years and it has changed a great deal. When I first came it was a much smaller team. Uh, we had no outreach service, we didn't go out to schools, uh, we didn't have a great program of, of family events. So we've become much more outward looking over the years that I've been here. The physical place has, has changed relatively little. We have actually transformed all of the displays at one time or another over those 30 years. And the use of the art gallery has changed remarkably because the gallery used to be primarily hired out to local artists in fortnightly slots. We used to have a blockbuster exhibition every, every summer. But there's been a great transformation in the quality of the exhibitions that we show. Do you remember your first day at the museum and can you tell us a little bit about it? I do. The thing that I remember is the, the then assistant curator giving me uh, a tour behind the scenes. Uh, and when I first went down into the basement and it seemed like there was these corridors uh, and rooms going off in all directions. And I commented on how it seems like a real labyrinth down here. It seems such a complicated environment. Do you still feel that way about it? You take it for granted. After the first week or so, yeah, you know exactly where you are and it's fine. Yeah. Is there something that people always ask you? The thing people commonly ask me is um, why Tunbridge Wells is called Royal and how it became Royal. Uh, they often imagine that it happened in, in the Victorian era, whereas actually it happened in a little bit later, uh, Edward VII's reign. What do you think is the most common misconception about what happened at a museum? I think people don't see beyond the public displays and exhibitions. Uh, so they think that the museum is essentially static, and if they think about uh, behind the scenes staff at all. They think about curator pottering around in the background, uh, dusting the precious things. They don't think about, uh, about, about outreach, uh, about research, uh, about the fact that the exhibitions need to be refreshed from time to time, about uh, uh, temporary exhibitions such as we have in the gallery. What do you think people need to work in a museum? I think that's very closely linked with the last question. Uh, because people don't always appreciate the diversity of roles that there are in museums today. Um, yes, there's curatorial work, collections management, as we call it nowadays, uh, but there's also front of house, uh, there, there's outreach work, there's, there's management. But uh, thinking about the recruitment we were doing just last week, I think it's, it has to be a balance uh, between knowledge and enthusiasm, uh, but also an interest in, in people. Uh, as well as in objects and in, uh, and in history. In your opinion, is a master's degree essential for a career in this sector? Absolutely not. I think people can, uh, can yeah, uh, uh, work their way up from the ranks. It's just that it, it is a very competitive profession. Um, so um, a master's degree, uh, well, that's a specialist degree in uh, in museum studies or, or related field will just give you that edge, but I wouldn't say it was essential, no. And again, it depends on, on what you're, you're trying to do. It may be more important for collections management, uh, whereas there are these other aspects, uh, front of house outreach, in which you can get into the career from other directions. Mm -hmm. What's so special about Tunbridge Wells? Tunbridge Wells has this unique story. It is the earliest English holiday resort. And unlike pretty much all the other major towns in Kent, it doesn't go back into deep antiquity. 
Tunbridge Wells was invented uh, out of nowhere uh, at, in relatively recent times by a bunch of local entrepreneurs and landowners who decided to capitalise on the uh, alleged wonderful health-giving properties of the Calibriate Spring. And they made up this thing as they went along. They didn't know what they were doing, uh, but in the process they, they created something that had never been seen before, uh, a place to, to get away from it all, uh, to enjoy organised entertainments and to tour the surrounding countryside. Who is your favourite personality from Tunbridge Wells history? I would say David Lionel Salomons uh, of Broomhill near, near Southborough because he epitomises the story of Tunbridge Wells as a place of discovery and innovation. He was a pioneer of motor transport. He held Britain's very first motor show here in Tunbridge Wells. He introduced mains electricity to the town. But he was a radical thinker in many other areas too. He wrote a pamphlet on the, uh, the rights of women, uh, advocating for greater educational opportunities and career opportunities for women. Uh, and he was interested in dialogue between different faiths as well. And my last question, mm. what is your favourite disgusted of Tunbridge Wells moment? I remember when we were launching uh, Kentish Delights which was a, a, a cross-county museum project displaying uh, objects in unusual locations. And as part of the celebrations of the launch, we had two actors giving guests uh, a tongue-in-cheek tour of Tunbridge Wells. And they performed this in character with a megaphone as well as their props. And we went down as far as uh, Chapel Place uh, and we were standing there uh, and just as they were coming to the end of their spiel, a uh, lady came out of one of the local shops and started haranguing them that they were disturbing the peace and disturbing her customers. And she hoped they weren't going to do this every week and the blue badge guys got on perfectly well without a megaphone. Why do you need that? And so uh, we moved on uh, down the hill and somebody commented, and that was disgusted of Tunbridge Wells. And I'm sure some people thought it was part of the performance because it was just so stereotypical. But it was absolutely real. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. And uh, we love having you here at the museum. I don't know what this place would be without you. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.